Hello there, this is Patricia from Pinky's World, um, an independent Snappin' Up demonstrator here in the UK and today I'm sharing how to make this lovely little box. I had a request to make some um, baby shower invitations and rather than just hand them over in a plastic package or whatever I wanted to make a nice wee box as part of the presentation so this is what I came up with only the next one I'm going to do is green. This one I wrapped the six inch papers round and double wrap them but when I creased I got an awful yucky old crease and I just couldn't see any way around so this time I have just cut them to fit so it just simply opens up with the ribbon it's all stuck behind here and it opens up with a wee uh, lifter and the cards will sit all inside which I have here but I can't show you the invitation themselves because the lady hasn't received them yet obviously so there's 30 of them here and they just fit in there perfectly but they are for the green box so I don't want to put them in just yet so that's what we're up to and this is the the items we used this is gingham gala which is no longer for sale but it's the only color green I had that suited the the request so that's what I'm going with but you go ahead and use what you have yourself or if you're buying new papers you know you can buy them off me if you like and um, all my links to the shop will be down below you there's so many lovely new DSP out at the minute you you will get there's some actually has gang I'm not sure what it is but I will I'll let you know so anyway this is what I'm using with the lemon lime twist which is also one of the older in colors which you can no longer get but a lot of people did uh, stack stash stash their stash up with lots of it does that make sense no anyway this is the the dies that i'm using they're called stitched nested labels and they can be bought as a bundle with the lovely um free as a bird stamp set you can buy those as a bundle and save yourself 10 percent, which i did because i think they're just the most beautiful um labels aren't they look at the lovely stitching you get round you don't need to go back in and emboss them they just instantly come out lovely it's beautiful so i used one off each side one slightly small on the other so i could layer them up nicely and for the stamp set uh, i'm using this um it was a bundle last year i don't think it's a bundle this year but you can still buy both separately uh, the stamp set is beautiful and you just punch the wee elephant out, stamp them out, punch them out and then stamp them again and punch out his wee ear which gives you the option for the big and the small elephant. Perfect. Plus his wee eye which I forgot but I mean don't think you need it anyway. You'd be hard pushed to punch an eye out wouldn't you? So that's what I'm using. You'll also need a one three quarter inch punch to give you this nice wee beveled area for easy picking out of your invitations. And this also fits the the Stampin' Up card or envelope. So any card you make, you could also do a box of, uh, for a gift card if you didn't want to do a baby one. So let's get started. First of all, you're going to need a piece of wisp of white. I'm going with white this time. I went very vanilla for that one to match the yellows. This time I'm going with wisp of white. So you need a piece that measures eight and a half inches by 12 inches. And we're using every bit of this. And the bit that you cut off here, which would bring it to 12 inches, you can use to cut out one of your um, items here. One of your labels. So you can layer that up. And you can also use it to stamp your, this is the waist here. You can also use it to stamp your wee elephant onto and punch. So there's no waste out of a 12 by 12 sheet. And it gives you a good size box that holds 30 invitations and 30 envelopes. So we're going to start by scoring on the eight and a half inch side, score at one inch. And one inch at this side, which is seven and a half inches. Turn it round and we're going to score at four and a half. And then five and a half. And we're going up to one, two, three, four and a half. So bring you up to ten and in ten inches. Score 
score that, then score at 11. Now, I have all these measurements written on my blog for you, so don't worry. I forgot to write them down for myself. You're going to need um, some DSP to cover this. But we'll do our scoring and cutting first. So, you want to score, this part here is going to be your lid. Oh, I'm going to push this away. Um, this part's going to be your lid, so you need that score line really scored good and firm because you want to sit nice and flat for you and the next one you want to do the same there good firm score and then score your body ones your base same at this side and then do your little inch side So we'll cut wee bits away here to give us less bother. This one, this is going to be your front, this is going to be your back, and this is going to be your lid. So we'll need to chop these away. Chop them in and tape them. Most very big to hold in one hand. And the same with the other side. And that gives you that based area. So that's going to be folding up and folding up and this is going to be folding over. So we don't need this top corner so we can cut it away. In fact you can cut in, give yourself a nice wee triangle here and just chop that away. And then for this one cut in, I want to leave a wee bit of it because I hate to see, I hate to be able to see inside the box like some kind of a wee flap that will keep it all secret which is this wee bit I'm talking about here. You want that just so that it's, it's sealed inside, you know what I mean? Whereas if I hadn't got that, it would be gavey there. And I don't like it, so that's what they, where these wee bits come into. So, sort of trim them off ever so slightly. And then just chop them in half. Roughly half. Do the same on the side, we're going to cut in a wee bit of a triangle here for your closure and then we're cutting in on these and again scale them in a bit and then cut it in half. That screen is very dark. Sometimes you're better at night times, you know this. But I'm hoping you can see it okay. Oh! So there you have the basis of your box. So we'll want to put our DSP on. This DSP was a piece of 6x6 which I've chopped down to 4 inches wide. And you want to line it up in the center and it's going to come down to here the last piece i stuck it on here and brought it right over here but as i say when i folded that it became quite chunky and i didn't like it at all so where is my glue as i say there is some nice gingham in the new if you have no gingham there is some nice uh, new gingham in the dsp the back of one of the dsps has lovely gingham so have a check out for that in the shop. Right, line that up so it's sort of central. My big head in the road, sorry. So that's the back, and this is going to be the front, which we want to do again. But in the middle, we want one of these. These are an inch wide, well, just slightly short of an inch, so that it'll sit. I put that on the wrong way. Oh. Get your ruler first. 
Actually, okay, I probably have. Five inches I've done it. Okay, we'll go with that. I'm going to leave that out. Cut yourself two strips. I could have mixed my strips up with something else. Two strips at five inches. If you want to do it along here, I'm not going to bother. I will add it at a later date, but in the meantime, I can't. I don't want to stop and cut. I've either cut them too short or I've lifted the wrong ones from the workroom. So. Either way, there's nothing I can do about it now other than tell you the dimensions and hopefully when I post a picture of this it will have what it was supposed to have. It'll also help you lining up if you have that wee strip in there you know. But don't worry. So stick your two pieces on there. And then this is going to be your front so we need to punch a, a wee loop to hold it off. So I'm using a one three quarter inch circle punch. Pop it in there and just by eye line it up if you can. As close as possible. If you want to take the time and measure it, oh, sugar me timbers, measure it. I go ahead, but I'm not going to bother. So I reckon there looks okay. So that gives you that nice wee loop at the at the top. So now we'll do all the gluing of the bits and get the box made up. So fold in your two wee flaps that are along the base. Put glue on. I would go with wet glue at this stage because you want it to hold good and firm. And just tap that down so that it's on the base of your table and cover nicely. So it's all nice and square and that glue does take really quick which is great when you're making boxes and do the same with the other side so you've got that nice closure now these ones we're going to have to put glue on but we want them to go on the inside I want my fold to go to the back not to the front so do your glue on these two flaps here on flatten them down and do it Both sides. And just line it up at the top. And the rest should follow suit. And the same with the other side. Keep going out of camera today. See when you go away on a holiday and then you come back and try to do it all over again. Honestly. My head is a sieve. I'll be back into the way the next week, I'm sure. So use your bone folder, give that a wee rub, make sure it's all taken on the inside for good support. And then this is just going to fold in, and if you find, I can see that bending up, so we don't want that to happen. So give it another wee cut. It's purely there to cover what I don't want people to see. It's nothing too important, but so choose yourself. You can you might prefer to take these off completely. So you're going to be popping that in like that, and that's going to stay there. And as you can see, when you're punching that, just don't go too far down because you don't want that showing. I've left it enough. So there's an inch here and there's less than an inch there. Right, now we want to pop these invitations inside. And then we're just going to close the box up. And we're going to tie it with our ribbon. And the ribbon I'm using, for the other one I used the lovely wee spotty ribbon. This one I'm going to go with flax ribbon, just in white. Should have enough left. So we want the ribbon to go right round the box. I thought it would show up nicely, this ribbon, um, against the green. So pull it down good and tight. So that it is going to hold everything in place and sort of get it central if you can too while you're doing that. 
pull it good and tight and tie your bow. This is lovely, this flex ribbon. Really nice to work with. And it gets a nice shape of the bow going too. So, that should sit very nicely. Scissors. So, there you are, that's nice, so alright. Again, that'll be in the list. So, now we want to do a bit of stamping. Could put this on actually. It's going to stick with the top. This is when you want to make sure that you have your ribbon slid to the center before you stick your squares on. So I'm using bigger squares for this one simply because I want it to bounce over the ribbon like so. So it's not sitting bulky, you know. So just line that up where you're happy with it. And then we're going to do a bit of stamping on this and do our little elephant. We'll do our elephant first. So we have the largest elephant out. I'm inking them up in lemon lime twist. You do match your colours with your papers. That's him. And then do ink him again. You don't need to ink the whole thing. Just round where his ear is. Because you're going to be popping it in to the punch. Right. That's him done. What's that over here? Away. And the sentiment is celebrate your big day, which is the girl's big day, her baby share, and it's their first baby, so they're all very excited. And it's lovely to have been asked to do the invitations. So line that up in your punch, your little elephant punch, which matches perfectly. And gives that lovely wee white edge all around, which really makes it stand out. I think it's beautiful. And then you have your wee ears, one large, one small. So we're going to go for the large one. So again, just you might have to trim that off. You want that to line up nicely again, not that front preferably. Oh. Be careful where you're stamping this. You want it to be able to maneuver your paper around so that it matches the punch. Still catching yet, aren't I? I want to leave myself something to hang on to here. There's it now. So line that up. Punch it out and watch where it lands. See how cute the wee elephant would be too. They are really nice. You could do mother and baby with them. And, oh, they're lovely. It is a cute wee set. I have that one from last year, but you can still get it. It carried forward. So get your dimensionals now. Um, and you need about two on the back of him. And then use a smaller square for his ear. And just pop it on there. Woo! Back to front again. Holy moly. And that's him ready. But we want to do a bit of um, stamping for the sentiment. So you could put him at either side. I did him on the other side of the, the yellow one. As you can see. So that'll be your big day. But I might do it this like he's blown it out his trunk. So we'll do that. I'm making it up well because my ink spot of Lemon Lime Twist is nearly done. But if you're using a brand new um, ink pad, you won't need to do that. So. 
Sad about your day, not very straight, but it's there now. Again, use your stamper apps if you have one for your sentiments. I think it really helps you to keep straight. Pop that on there, and then we're going to pop this on here with a few longer. And there we have a nice wee package. And you don't really miss the green, but I might add it, you never know. The green strips that I didn't cut properly. But I'll put them in the dimensions for you anyway, in case you want to do it. And there we go. Lovely wee package. Full and scoot weighty package. And uh, perfect for a wee gift. I think she'll be really pleased with it. So that's me. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit higgledy piggledy as I say. It takes me a while to get back into things again after a wee break. And I have really enjoyed it. A lovely holiday in Rhodes. And it's hard to come back, isn't it? But once you get crafting again, that's you. So all my uh, details will be down below. If you want to shop with me, uh, I could be your demonstrator. I would love it. You can get my link to my shop down below as well. If you need a catalogue, give me a shout. If you go to my blog, the link's down below as well. You can sign up for my newsletter and you'll get free PDFs of all my weekly projects uh, sent out here regularly. So you have nothing to lose. So preferably people from the UK should sign up because I can't sell to people in America or Canada. You'll have your own demonstrators. So bear that in mind. So thanks for watching anyway and I'll catch you again next week. Bye.